Hello, 6th graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, 7th grade math, section 5.3, Writing Proportions, lesson. Pause while you write the lesson number and title in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your notebook. Today's objective is, I can write and solve a proportion by completing Big Ideas Math practice with 100% accuracy in multiple attempts. It's important that you take a moment to write this information in your math notebook. One way to write a proportion is to use a table. So copy this table into your notebook. So it says last month and this month. So we're comparing two months purchase cost and the total cost for ringtones. So last month you got two ringtones for six dollars and this month you can get three ringtones for X dollars, and it doesn't say how many X is, so that's a bit of a mystery. So it says use the columns or rows to write a proportion. So when we write a proportion, we simply take the information and put it at, write it as fractions. So we can write it as ringtones to ringtones, so they're next door to each other like they are in the table and dollars to dollars so that's literally taking what's in the table and if you can imagine a big eraser erasing the edges of the boxes so that this ratio table shows you now that it is truly just equivalent fractions in boxes and so the numerators have the same units and the denominators have the same units. Another way to do this is to use the rows. So if you do that, you take the ringtones and you're comparing the ringtones. If you have so if you have two ringtones, you pay six dollars. So ringtones six. And if you have three ringtones, you pay X dollars. So then you're putting the information for each thing across from each, other, from each other. So you're going horizontally or using the rows. So depending on what you're trying to figure out, you would use different methods for different problems. So we're going to move on to example one, writing a proportion. A chef increases the amounts of ingredients in a recipe to make a proportional recipe. The new recipe has six cups of black beans. Write a proportion that gives the number, and our number is called X, the number X of tomatoes in the new recipe. So it says organize the information in a table. So we've taken our original recipe, which is one and a half cups, and that's one and a half cups of black beans and one tomato. So we are getting this information from over here in the recipe. And so when we use one and a half cups of black beans in our original recipe, if we want to make a recipe using six cups of black beans, then we would need to figure out how many tomatoes that would need. So we can write this information exactly how it is in the, in the chart, in the table that we just made, where we have 1.5 cups of black beans over one tomato on the left, and we have 6 cups of beans over X tomatoes on the right. Another way to write the proportion is comparing the beans... 1.5 cups of beans to 6 cups of beans. And one tomato to X tomatoes. So these are both perfectly acceptable proportions. 
Now let's take a look at example two, solving proportions using mental math. So the problem we're given to solve is three halves equals x over eight. So our first step, as always, is to write down the problem. And here's step one. We're going to think, which is always a good first step. The product of two and what number equals eight? So we're looking down here. 2 times what equals 8? And our answer, of course, is 4. So 2 times 4 equals 8. And then step 2, because we multiplied the bottom of the fraction by 4 to get to our 8, we have to multiply the top of our fraction by 4 as well. So 3 times 4 equals 12. So since our top number here is now 12, because 3 times 4 equals 12, that means that x equals 12. So that is our solution to this proportion. Moving on to example 3, we're going to use we're going to be solving proportions using mental math again. So when I say that we're using mental math and then I write things down, it's to show you what should be going on in your brain. As always, I do want you to show your work, so you do need to show me a little bit of what is going on in your head. If you can't use mental math to solve these, it's certainly fine to write things down. It says in example one, so we have to think, Think backwards a little bit. How many tomatoes are in the new recipe? So it says solve the proportion. So remember 1.5 cups of black beans gave us a recipe with one tomato and six cups of black beans gives us a recipe with X tomatoes. So we want to know, well, how many tomatoes do we need to go out and buy if we're going to use six cups of black beans? So, so let's think. The product of 1.5 and what number is 6? Well, that sounds a little tricky at first, but if we think about it, it's not so bad. We know that 1.5 is less than 2, and... 2 times 3 equals 6. So we know that to get to 6, we're going to need something larger than 3 to make up for that missing half here, because there, if you think about the 2 is missing a half. So we should step it up, step it up a little bit and make that 1.5 a little bit bigger. So that's how we come up with 1.5 times 4. So 1.5 times 4 does indeed equal 6. And so we multiply that by, we multiply the 1.5 times the 4 to get to the 6. And if we do that to the top of the fraction, we have to do the same thing to the bottom. And so 1 times 4 equals 4. So x equals Four. So there are four tomatoes in the new recipe. Remember, to earn credit for viewing your flipped lesson, you need to complete your notes in your ISN, complete your on-your-own questions in your ISN, and submit them in Google Forms, and complete your Big Ideas math assignment in your math notebook, and submit that when it is 100% correct. Please visit your teacher if you have any questions.